calling the Tropa City Council to order Monday, August 26, 2013. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Here. Brown? Here. Carroll? Here. Kersine? Present. Daughtery? Here. Midnight? Here. Mizell? Here. Thank you. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for prayer. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come tonight thanking you for the many blessings that you have given each and every one here today. Be with this committee meeting, dear Heavenly Father, and counsel that each and every decision that we make here will be for the betterment of the community. Be the ones, dear Heavenly Father, in our community that have lost loved ones or, dear Heavenly Father, have loved ones that are sick. Not only be with the sick, but be with the caregivers. Be with our armed service, not only on foreign ground, but here in the United States, God direct their lives and bring them safely home to their families. We ask in that precious name. Amen. I <coughs> the motion to approve the minutes of the last regular council meeting, which would be 8 12 13. So moved, Your Honor. Moved by Mr. Krizine, second by Mr. Brown. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Krizine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And my Yes. Thank you. First item on the agenda, citizens request. Having none, we'll move right along. First item, marriage report. Motion to adopt resolution for the annual Labor Day Parade on Monday, September the 2nd, 2013. Hello. I'll move with Mr. Carroll and second by Mr. Corzine. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Prezine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Thank you. The parade will be at uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll move, meet right out here by the side of the city hall. Uh, if anyone wants to ride, uh, probably need to be here by 9.30 or something like that. Next item. Motion to accept the purchase of a 9.6 V cordless hydraulic crimping tool in the amount of $2,395 from ID Supply for the Light Department. So moved. Moved by second. Mr. Cruzine. Second by Mr. Mizell. Call roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carol? Yes. Krizine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Thank you. Next item. Motion to accept a motion to accept flu shots for all full-time city employees from Southern Seven Health Department at a cost of $25 each. Now, we don't force them to take them. Uh, want to, you know, we don't make them take them. So, but for anybody that uh, is, uh, you know, has an uh, incline to take them, uh, we will pay for them. So, I've got a motion there. Motion by Mr. Krizine. Second. And I don't exactly know what the date is, but we will get that out to everyone in plenty of time for you to make arrangements to get them. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carol? Yes. Krizine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you. Next item is a ratification of the approved contract for design services with HMG Incorporated for the pool bathhouse grant and that was actually a paper that we actually signed a week or so ago uh, for the ones that, that I could get hold of and did come in uh, so now we need to ratify that. I'll make a motion to ratify I'll Mr. Carroll I'll and Mr. Corzine. 
Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Resign? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And myself? Yes. The next is the informational type thing. We actually had uh, notice about a week and a half ago that there was an intention to uh, build a actual new levy on the Missouri side. Uh, through an investigation, we actually uh, uh, asked Mr. Davis, which is our emergency service personnel, uh, to see what they could find out about this. I actually got a call on the phone and got an email. From what we could find out through the, uh, the uh, flood service in Paducah and the Corps of Engineers, uh, what we found out was not exactly the way it was interpreted by the person that called me, uh, whether they had a vested interest or whatever. Uh, we feel that our uh, questions were answered sufficiently. Uh, the project is to build the levee back to the appropriate height that was uh, blown in 11. Now, from what we can find out through the federal and uh, the Corps actually stated that they have documentation that says that if the uh, if the flooding become uh, to the point that it become necessary to take part of that uh, levy down again that there was three designated places that could be uh, I guess they actually you know, they don't blow the whole thing up I don't believe like they did before but uh, and I don't think it's as high right now as what it was then. So uh, I probably won't be uh, making a trip down there. I would planned on going to uh, uh, Cairo to actually meet with those folks. But from what we could find out, the way they were going to put it back would not impact the city of Metropolis uh, as bad if, you know, as it did before in the first place. And I did have a conflict of uh, meetings uh, Pack roll board is actually going to meet at 4:30 uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Thursday, and I probably uh, need to be at that pack roll meeting. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. I will not yeah. 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 You can put your picture in there, one So <laughs> probably Miss Barfield and I will probably be attending that pack roll meeting. You know, I certainly don't want to be on the front page of the newspaper mm -hmm. or something like that. So we will probably be at that meeting. Very so, good. But uh, what we found out was, uh, you know, uh, like I said, you, when, you, when you get these kind of calls, you don't know exactly what to expect. And what we found out, and what Keith found out, we are perfectly safe, we're in good shape, we're, you know, nothing to worry about, and things like that. So, uh, so I will be attending the uh, PAC board meeting. Next item. Corporate Council Report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the first item we have, in, before I call for a motion, if anybody would want to discuss this in a closed session or something first. Uh, I'll this time. Are you okay? All right. There weren't any changes, I will tell you that. Well, let me take you back. There was one we found where uh, we had listed an end date of the contract as uh, June 30th, 2015. It's actually June 30th, 2016. And we changed that. But everything that I gave you last time uh, is reflected in here. We did not make any further changes. And the union did approve it too, by the way. They did go ahead and vote and they did approve it. Um, in fact, they're ready to, they've been bugging us to come down and sign it. And I said, no, not until we approve it. But uh, we shouldn't do that. No, so, we can't imagine that. So, anyway, uh, that's what you have before you, and that's what we would need. Do we need to suspend the rules yeah. then, Rick? Well, you we don't can treat the last time as the first say, reading. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we, yeah. Already yeah. Had. we yeah. actually yeah. looked at it, went over. Well, yeah. I'll make a motion if we uh, adopt the ordinance. What would that be, Jim? 16. Number 16, uh, the collective bargaining agreement with the operating engineers, local 318. Now, we had second four, set 14 aside for that. So, did you renumber? Well, but we had a renumber the next, yeah. after that when she got yeah. back. We explained. Okay. Terry didn't really understand, but that's we how we normally do that. Yeah. Well, I didn't think so, but I Bob, did you second that? Yes, I did. 
and you're taking this through as a motion to adopt. Mm -hmm. to adopt. Yes. 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 Right. yes. No, not spend rule, just adopt right. a second. Yes. Rule. So we'll just mark through the bundle. All right. We didn't know exactly how we yeah. want to do it, so we want to be safe. So we'll be All right. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Cresine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And myself? Yes. Thank you. The next thing we have, um, and we just need to get a feel for how you want to deal with this, um, uh, Mrs. Darling Wilhelm that lives on uh, 12th Street, uh, my understanding from what the mayor told me last week is the process of selling her home and in that process learn that she has a fence that may encroach on a right of way, uh, or appears to encroach on a right of way. Um, and it's the right of way, it's like we have a lot of places in town, uh, it's platted, but it was never built, okay? Uh, Chad's here and he can answer questions too, but what, I had him go back and pull it. I'll show you, uh, I didn't make a, uh, uh, sure I if I don't get enough there, we'll be there Anyway, I, it's, the, it's the orange area uh, that you see highlighted on the map. It's, it's and I knew when you made it done. If you're looking at it like this in front of you, this is 10th Street down here. Mm -hmm. 12th, okay. 12th, yeah. 12th, 12th Street, Street, I'm sorry, not 12th, 10th Street, 12th Street. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, there is an actual alley down here that goes through, okay? But, and when this addition to Metropolis was platted in 1902, there was this orange strip didn't exist. But the owners of the property, that own property in that addition went back and replatted it in 1924 and put that alley in. And then they replatted it again in 1947 and they left it in. So it's a right of way through there, although it's never been built. Uh, there are two ways to handle this. Um, you can vacate that right of way. Now that requires requires an ordinance. It also requires notice in the paper in the public hearing <coughs> before we do that. It'll take about 30 days or so. Uh, the other way is what we've done with a lot of individuals uh, is grant them an encroachment agreement. Uh, we approve an encroachment agreement, which says, look, leave your fence. We're not building this. But if we ever have to get back there for a utility purpose, water line, sewer line, overhead electric, it's still a right away. We've got the right to move the fence, take it down, whatever we need to do. Um, and, uh, and we've got a lot worse encroachments than a fence out there, believe me. We've got we got buildings, we've got swimming pools, and we've got all kinds of things. Uh, I think we even had a, uh, a small horse that was encroaching in, on one manhole at one time, but okay. Um, the, uh, uh, in any event, uh, we have, well, for the most part, we have done en encroachment agreements. Um, just because then we don't have to worry about, well, gosh, what if we ever need that for a sewer line or electric line or something else? And in some cases, we found we do actually have some water lines through these locations that we really might not have known about until we got to digging around. So it's up to you guys. But if we vacate it, if you vacate it, then half of the alley goes to the owners of the property on either side. Okay, so uh, the part that extends behind Mrs. Wilhelm's property, uh, she'd get half. And the part of it that owns the other side would get the other half. Where is actually the fence at that's encroaching? It's along that back line. It's kind of here. Uh, it's you can actually kind of see it right there, just Richard. A little, just a it's just a little bit. It's not it's a little bit. It looks like it's behind a building, right? <coughs> it's a swimming pool. It's, it's a pool. It's a fence around it. See the pool over? Yeah. It's a fence. It's the second time. Oh, I'm looking at that. Uh, it's come up a few years ago. You remember it came up a few years ago over a tree. Yeah, it was in it was in Mr. Yates's yeah. uh, backyard. He didn't want the fence close to his tree. Well, she didn't want the tree over her swimming pool. Well, but one way or the other, there. Yeah, but yeah. we did go well, back there. In fact, I think Chad is the one who went back there and cut that tree down. Yeah, or him yeah. and Stoney. Yeah, so. So we got the culprits but, with us. Yeah, yeah we we, we brought <laughs> both of them up here <laughs> with us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've been reinforced to go back in there. I don't know that it makes a difference. It's, it's in Mr. Quirrell and Mr. Uh, uh, Midnight's Ward. You can yeah. either leave or just grant her the. It'd be easier if you just grant the. Uh, be faster, too. If we just grant the encroachment. 
I, yeah. yeah, I think that's probably better at this point. And then if anybody comes up, we can do it later. Yeah. That's what I would have to say. But she actually has her house sold, and they were supposed to close today. And that should probably allow it to move faster to get yes. closing done, too, I would think. I don't think anybody will object uh, just that the fence encroaches, and we're giving them permission to leave it there. Okay. Chances and are it's never going to get moved. Chances are it'll never get moved. Uh, you know, we had this at, in, in, we had this issue out in Lindsay Edition mm -hmm. with a bunch when we did the uh, uh, electric modification out there, and unfortunately we didn't have encroach. We didn't have much of anything. We had to move a lot of fences and stuff, and uh, uh, you know, probably as we and, and I know you got one in Catherine. We got one on Catherine. A big one. Uh, we, now, yeah, that's going to be a part of the garage. Yeah, we know it's over some lines. So, we, so. We, we've done the agreements like this before. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been very reasonable people. Yeah. Uh, but we just can't always give up the property because we may need to come through there. That's right. The future. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess what I would ask is that you uh, approve a motion directing <coughs> us to uh, prepare an encroachment agreement uh, as motion. well. Huh? Right so, away. Okay. I can. Motion made by Mr. Midnight. And who did we get a second round? Mr. Mr. Carroll. We'll bring it back to you to prove it. That it's <coughs> That's right. what I was wondering. Do we have to do that? And yeah, you know, it names yeah. to speed it up for there so we they can go ahead and get it closed? It still needs to you, be Usually we do those amendments <coughs> too, so I, and I don't have anything drafted. And, okay. and I've got to get some legal. <coughs> so, yeah, we've got uh, legally. We don't want any problem with that. So they would take uh, two but weeks. I mean, it's hard to say that, you know, it's going to pass council, but it should. I mean, is that, can they still move ahead with what they're trying to do on the sale? They'll or? probably want it signed by both parties mm -hmm. before okay. they close, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm guessing. I, I don't know. I'll talk. It depends on who's handling the closing. Next meeting is the night. Yeah. But I did tell her that you more than likely we probably couldn't do anything any faster than two weeks, and she understood that. Okay, we do have a motion. <coughs> we have a second. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Persine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And myself? Yes. Okay. One last thing I want to report on there for you, Yvonne. Um, I know a lot of you have had interest in, in, in the zoning ordinance and where we're going with the zoning ordinance. Uh, Chad's here tonight, and uh, uh, if you'd like, he'll. We had a meeting, actual meeting of the zoning commission last week, and I thought maybe he could give you guys an update and tell you where we're at and where we're headed. Uh, I told him I'd yield my time. Hey, uh, uh, last uh, Tuesday, I think the 20th, we had a meeting of the zoning commission. The intentions of that meeting was to kind of bring everybody back up to speed from the uh, public hearings that we held in December at the end of last year. Um, the main topic of those, uh, uh, those hearings opposition to the extraterritorial jurisdictional zoning that we had, you know, recommended doing. We tested the waters by going all the way out a mile and a half because we have, uh, uh, by Illinois, the statute the right to do that. Uh, so we wanted to get everybody kind of brought up to speed with that. Last Tuesday, we all got together. We had, I think, nine or 14 members of the Zoning Commission president. Um, we had members of the Farm Bureau president, which we had, had kind of an impromptu meeting with them to address some of the uh, concerns that Ag zoning, the A zoning that we were going to put out uh, outside of the uh, corporate limits. Um, right off the bat, everybody got into you know you know ideas for the ETJ. Uh, we basically came to an agreement that uh, we're going to try to establish an extraterritorial boundary that is defined by our services. Uh, city electric, city water. Not a lot of sewer goes out to the, into the county, but we do have water lines and uh, water lines and electric lines. Uh, we presented a map. Uh, the members present in the audience and members of the uh, commission uh, thought that was a good idea. That uh, definitely gave us a leg to stand on to say, if, you know, if you're going to build, you're going to build our, you know, our uh, uh, services, then we want to have some say so over you know, what you're doing or how you're going about doing it, how big it is, and where you're going to do it. Uh, so there was, a, I think, a motion passed to tentatively agree on that map. We are now trying to uh, identify properties in the county and there were some questions about manufactured homes, um, some other small issues regarding some uh, 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 permitted by right use things that uh, uh, the uh, Farm Bureau members have brought up. So we're working on that. We're going to meet again on September 10th. Uh, members from uh, EDR consultants were there also to help out with some of the wording. They are, are currently typing up and 
completing the, uh, the, the wording of the document itself. We locally are working on a map. Uh, we hope to have everything on the website sometime before the 10th so the people, the public can see it. And of course these meetings are public so we'll be putting it out there on the 10th. Hopefully we'll get everybody here have good, uh, another good productive meeting. We were here for about three, three and a half hours the other night I think. And then maybe we can get a motion and get that before you guys, uh, you know, here, you know, here shortly, so. How far, Chad? know the extent of how far out you're going from the city limits? It, it's going to vary. You know, so like on the west end of town, you know, we go all the way out to uh, Mr. Mays' property, about Mount Mission Road, all the way pretty much down the end of Airport Road. So if you look at it from the standpoint of Airport Road, we're practically a mile, we're almost a mile and a half out going down Airport Road. But on the east end of town, out by the interstate, pretty much where our utilities are is where the city limits is. You know? So that's where, uh, in other words, where the utilities go east, west, North too is going to be to where the utilities right. extend to. Correct. Right. Yeah, we won't have like an equal buffer around the town, like a quarter mile away around the city limits. It may be a mile one direction. It may be, you know, that you know, however far in another direction outside the city limits. But it's going to be everything within inside of this defined border of what is our city utilities. So I think we go out just past Cordy Road on North Avenue, which is where our last transformer is out uh, that direction. Um, like I said, all the way out uh, to uh, Mr. May's property on 45, coming back into town on Mount Mission Road, out Airport Road, and then uh, as far as like the industrial park, things like that, you know, pretty much where the boundaries are established already. I think, uh, is it Gurley Road? There's a water main that runs down Gurley Road. We actually have customers that are actually tapped onto that. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. I thought that would just serve the industrial park, but actually they're on that. So, and so uh, where does it go to the interstate? Yeah, it's pretty much right there at I-24, the okay. westerly right away is pretty much where it all stops at for the most part. We don't have any utilities, well, other than the rest area. Right. We have okay. sewer, I think, that goes out to the rest. But that's in the city limits anyway. We, so it's not that thing anyway. So Jim, we, you're saying utilities. Now, would it be if we run one utility, or do we have to run two utilities? <laughs> no, if, if you're hooked up to our services, whether it be a water line, whether it be a sewer or an electric line, or then, one or the other. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, I said, out okay. on out any, of Gurley Road. So any service. Right. Gurley okay. Road, we don't have electric out on Gurley Road. Our service line, our electric line runs through the woods actually south of Gurley. Excuse me. So um, the fact that there's a water main runs up there and hooked up to it, we're gonna say that, you know, if you're within this boundary of our uh, city infrastructure, we're going to uh, you know yeah. attach a ag district zoning, which is you know, pretty much single family use farm use. I think it was unanimous at the yeah, committee yeah. and the representation from the Farm Bureau were in 100% that it was not too much to ask that, you know, if you're on our utilities, you should abide by what the rules are and stuff like that. Everybody was in agreement, so it was a very, very productive, good meeting. So uh, I was yeah, pleased. Right. Right. Yeah, the intention of that meeting was to recap and address the ETJ. If the ETJ wasn't going to be extended and everything else that follows was kind of a moot point. Right. So once we got that agreed upon, now we'll start working on, you know, refining some of the, uh, some of the, you know, the Farm Bureau questions. They had some really good uh, questions about, um, and you started talking about uh, grain feed, grain silos that are, uh, maybe they don't use them for a year or two years, but maybe two, you know, after those two years, they'll fill them up for a year or two straight. And there was some wording in there that, you know, talked about uh, abandoned properties and abandoned items. That in town we deal with that stuff, but you know we we kind of said the time frame was just a year, so they brought up some interesting comparisons. You know, and, uh, we agree that you know we need to take a look at that. And I think we're re rewriting some of the wording on that. So, so it's a, it's a, are these people State Farm? Say State Farm. Farm Bureau. Farm Bureau. I'm sorry. Just say State uh, Farm Bureau. Are, are they ex are they going to sign off on this? Are they just going to answer questions? They had. Uh, so is there a representing the farm? Right. They had requested and. They had actually appointed two people to show up as kind of consultants or non-voting members. They show up and uh, we have a question. And I think there was even people there the other night that agreed that we probably shouldn't have them here all along for the most part because they, you know, there's some stuff in there that we think about in town, but when you think about farm, you know, it it's kind of apples and oranges. But, you know, we had to make some changes to some of to help accommodate, you know, the uh, farming community. So I think it was a good idea. I think they liked it too. Matter of fact, it really wasn't anything that they didn't bring up So anyway, September 10th will be the next time uh, the commission will get together. 
everybody was there getting that kick that day, so we should have another forum and uh, hopefully it'll move right along. Thanks. Thank you, Jay. That's all I got. And then there is a, uh, on the next uh, committee report, there is a uh, mistake on the way that's listed. It should not be an ordinance committee. It should have been an industrial committee under Mr. Midnight's committee. Thank you. I have a motion to accept proceeding with the development agreement with Smart Transportation and Industrial. Did you make the motion? I made a motion. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Midnight, second by Mr. Mizell. Discussion? Call the roll, please. Barkill? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Cresine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Thank you. Second item, uh, Mr. Jason Cates did bring a proposal <coughs> once again. Uh, involving constructing a street and thus paying for it and we we decided the committee decided at that point to take no action as our action so I will make a motion that this council vote to take no action on the proposal by Mr. Jason Cates. Metro Holding Company. Second. So the motion does read motion to accept take taking no action. No action. No action. Yep. We have a motion by Mr. Midnight second by Mr. Mizell. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Cresine? No. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Thank you. I think that's all I have, Mayor. Next item, Tropas Area Tourism. Mr. Barfield. Yes, sir. Mayor, the Tropas Area Tourism Commission did meet a special call meeting last Friday. And now this, they have two uh, recommendations to bring for the council. And I'll make, uh, make a motion on both of these. The first one being a motion to accept the recommendation for grant for Fort Mass Encampment in a matter of $30,000. Second. Motion by Mr. Barfield, second by Mr. Corzine. Call the roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Cresine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to this next item. Uh, Alderman Kerr was the president, and he uh, informed the uh, committee exactly how the murals were and what the problem was and how it could be corrected. Okay. Very good job. I will make a motion to accept the recommendation for grant for the mural maintenance <laughs> in the amount of $2,750. Second. Motion made by Mr. Barfield, second by Mr. Carroll. Discussion? Call the roll. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Cresine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. McManus? Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Sorry. Short clue, right? That's the clue. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next item, and we will start in the four left hand corner, my left hand, where we don't hurt anybody's feelings on the back row back there. We're going to go this way. His first time. Chief? Did you uh, let anyone know about the conference that's going to come up in July? I'll th I was waiting for you to explain that. All right. The, uh, that way, if we have a riot or anything down there, I know exactly who to blame. The Illinois State Police Troopers Lodge. Um, union won or was granted uh, a vote by the 2700 lodges to host the conference, the state annual fraternal order police conference. They called down here and asked if we were interested in letting it happen down here, talked to the mayor. So they voted and they agreed that July 24, 25th, and 26th you'll be invaded by about 3,000 police officers. Um, the, the state <laughs> annual conference will be held here in Metropolis. Um, Harris is uh, committed to 130 rooms. They're trying to get hold of the Baymont. They're having some problems with that, but I guess they're possibly being bought out by somebody else. That's 
kind of a problem. But there's tours and facilities and some wine tasting tours and some other stuff that have happened with the spouses and everyone else that's coming down here. But um, it should be a good good thing for the city, bringing some money to the city. I'm looking forward to it. Chief, how many did you say would attend? Approximately 3,000 people. Ooh, wow, thank you. Thank you. I'm working on a deal. They'll all be armed. <laughs> I'm working on a deal for the <coughs> Illinois State Police on the off-duty officer. I mean, the people that's working are going to have security checks. You're not taking them. <laughs> Chief Morris. Frank. Recently and over the years, and how we maintain uh, all of our flood uh, certificate information for uh, anybody that builds or does any development in the floodplain. So it was a good visit. Stoney, you have anything to bring? No, I'm good. All right. Last last Wednesday or Thursday, Stoney and I went up to Prairie State and toured the new power plant, and of course everything. Uh, they got one unit down right now. We got the other unit operating, and. Uh, uh, we walked through the power plant and all over the coal mine for about two, a little two over two hours on the hottest day we've had thus far this year. The end. I said, "Stoney, you got any questions?" He goes, "They ever do this in October or April?" Broke <laughs> 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 good, did you? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Old business. New business. Miscellaneous reports. Under miscellaneous, uh, we have uh, the, the park has the baskets up. I'm not sure they're all up, but I think they are all up for the uh, disc golf. Uh, and Chris actually told me that uh, barring anything happening or anything like that, we are actually going to start on the pad work. Uh, within the next week or so. So they are going to set up uh, some volunteer type base things. Mr. Uh, uh, Turner is actually has some number, I mean some uh, individuals that want to help, a lot of local people and stuff like that. So uh, we will try to keep everybody informed if they want to come out and watch or if they actually want to uh, participate in it. I will try to let everybody know where we're at and stuff like that on the days we're going to do it. Financial report. Payment of salaries, payroll, and contract bills. I saw them there. Moved by Mr. Corzine. Second. Second by Mr. Mizell. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Corzine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mizell? Yes. Payment of miscellaneous bills. I still move as well. Second. Yeah. Call a roll, please. Barfield? Yes. Brown? Yes. Carol? Yes. 
Prezine? Yes. Daughtery? Yes. Midnight? Yes. And Mike Yes. Thank you. And we do need a short executive session for pending litigation. I'll make that motion. A second. Motion by Mr. Mizell and second by Mr. Midnight. It's midnight.